Hello everyone, I'm Wenjun Yuan from MIT. So today I'm introducing our work on connecting touch and feel on material property per, uh, perception. The work is co authored with Shao Xiong Wang. So let's see. There are two scarves in similar configurations, but when seeing the pictures, we can know they are different. Especially, they have different mechanical properties. But for the same fabrics, we can make have many, many different configurations, while we still know it's the same piece of fabrics, because there is something remains invariant. That is the me mechanical properties. And those properties will decide what the fabrics would like to look like. So let's consider this more standardized uh, process. We drip the fabrics from a post. And just by seeing this image, we can get many impressions of the mechanical properties, such as it's stretchy, flexible, and thin. And also, if we know those properties, we can imagine what the fabrics will look like. Similarly, we can also touch the fabrics, and we can get many impressions of the properties of what is uh, connected to the touch. But if we ask a human, what are the mechanical properties that exactly help them to decide the look and touch? They may, he may feel confused, he doesn't know, but our brains are just so smart to figure out all those representations of those uh, property set. And these representations help us for many tasks. For example, it helps us to imagine what the fabrics would feel like after looking at it, or what it may look like after we feel it. So here we ask questions. Can a computer do the same to find the representations of the materials, of the material properties, and that should be invariant of the configurations and the sensory modalities? This representation can help us with many tasks. And here, we are, special, uh, we are especially interested in connecting touch and vision and like predict what the fabrics will look like or what it will feel like. So to, to address the question, we designed this neural network to extract an embedding vectors from the input images. We expect the embedding vectors should be a good pre uh, representation of the material properties of the fabrics. So apart from this, we also have other modalities here. So we have the depth images. It's also the, of the images of the fabric strippings. But here, it's much easier for the computer to understand be because we don't have the interference of the color, the illuminations, and other things. And, and we also have the touch informations. So we, have, uh, we make two separate convolutional neural networks for them and extract the embedding vectors with them. But even though the input are from different modalities, but they are from the same fabrics, so we expect the embedding vectors should be very similar. So the one question here is how we get the touch signals of the fabrics. So in this project, we use a high resolution tactile sensor called GelSight. And the sensor has used many experience from the computer vision. So here shows how the sensor works. The central part of it is a piece of clear elastomer with a reflective membrane on the top. When the elastomer is in contact with the surface, it deforms. And the reflective membrane will make some special shadings. We just pose a camera on the other side to capture these shadings, and then we can re reconstruct the 3D structure using photometric stereo from the images. So then we just wrap, uh, wrap up everything, including the elastomer, the camera, and the illuminations, and make a small uh, tactile sensor here, like gel site. So this is what we do in this project. We, look, we lay the fabrics flat on the surface with a folding in the, in the center. And then we press the gel size sensor on these foldings because we believe these foldings, is, these folding informations are very informative of the mechanical properties. And from the other uh, window here shows what we see from the, uh, from the camera on the gel size sensors. And from those images, we can see that the gel size can help us to capture the very fine textures on the fabrics as well as the sh uh, shape of the foldings in the middle. So let's consider another situation. We have another piece of fabrics. It looks like to be much stiffer and thicker. And we also press the gel size sensors on the foldings. And this time, we are getting very, very much different signals. 
So to do this project, we collect a fabric data set of 118 fabrics. There, there is a pretty huge variance in, all the, uh, in the mechanical properties, but some of them are very similar. And we drip the fabrics from the post for 10 times and gather those color images and depth images. We also press the gel size sensor on them for multiple times. So there have been some uh, related work on cross-model learning and the learning of properties from vision. For example, we have the works on connecting vision and text, vision and sound, and vision and touch. So there have been work on studying the uh, mechanical properties of the rigid objects from those motion videos. And we have the work on uh, study the fabric properties from the video of the fabric flowing. And here we, specific, uh, we want to thank Dr. Bowman for sharing her data set of fabrics with us. So in our work, we want to see, uh, study the connection between the vision and touch. So we, specific, uh, we ask the task like this. So given that we have a cryo signal of, uh, of uh, touching uh, fabrics, and we have those candidates of the color images and the set of candidates of depth images. So we ask, can we pick up the images that are from the same fabrics as we just touched? So we use the gel site to gather the touch signals. And the good thing about that is the input is just in the format of images. So we just use the AlexNet that is printing the image net to, uh, to process the signal, and it worked pretty well. So we generate an embedding vector from the input signal. And apart from this, we also have the input from the color images and depth images, and we have some different neural networks for them. And for the training process, we just designed these large joint neural networks with the three modalities and train the three uh, CNNs at the same time. We wish to make sure if the input are from the same fabrics, the embedding vectors should be very close. But if they are from different fabrics, the embedding vectors should be very different. So we use a contrastive, uh, contrastive loss to do this. So here's just one example of how the network works. So given that we have a query signal of a gel set touching the fabrics, just by looking at the images, we can imagine it has the texture some kind of like a knit, but it looks like very thin. And we just feed in this signal into the corresponding neural network and get an embedding vector. And we also have a set of candidate color images and depth images. We feed them too into the uh, neural networks and get their embeddings. We just measure the distances between the query signals and the candidate signals and pick, that, uh, and pick the closest one. So in this case, we got the correct pair. But if we, see the, if we take a look at the second pair and the third pair, we can, feel that, we can see that the distance is very close and the fabrics are, actually look very similar because they are all very thin and stretchable fabrics. And in this case, we have another kind of, uh, we have another credit signal that looks like some very fuzzy and soft and thick fabrics. And it, it may remind us of some very comfortable blankets. And here are the candidate images and the matching result. We didn't find the red pair this time, but we can still see that the, uh, the one that picked by the neural network looks pretty similar to the, to the ground truth one because it is also a very thick and fuzzy blanket. So here we show the overall result of picking the depth images or the color images to the touch images. So we found that the result is much better than the chance. So we also try to do other matchings, uh, to do matchings between other modalities or even between the single modalities. So there is one thing we found specifically interesting in our project is that we found that if we learn with both vision and touch, that will help the neural network to gain a better understanding of the material property than learning from only vision. So here we consider only a pure vision task of matching the matching the visual images, that, or in other words, we want to find out the two images that are from the same fabrics. So specifically here, we consider the depth image, so because they are much easier to understand for the computer. So one way to do this is just to train a uh, joint neural network, as I just introduced. So I train the network to, uh, to pair the depth images and the touch images. So. Uh, uh, so to make sure they are just giving in pairs. But another way to do this is to train on um, pure uh, vision signals. 
So that makes sure we have uh, still have two branches, but there are two uh, identical CNNs and we fine tune them together. But for the test, uh, we only use the CNNs for the depth images because the input is only the depth images. In other words, in the first case, we have the, cut, we have the uh, touch signals, but it's not used in the test at all. And surprisingly, the first model performs much better than the second one. So our, uh, our explanation is that we believe the touch signals help the vision signals to pick up the most important information and rule out the non-relevant information. So as a conclusion, in this work, we train neural networks to generate representations about the material properties, that is invariant of the material configurations and sensory modalities. And we also use those neural networks to do a cross-model matching between vision and touch. And during the process, we found that there's some, something interesting that the cross-training of vision, uh, vision and touch can improve, the, can, uh, can improve the neural network's performance on pure vision tasks. However, there are still many open questions in, and interesting things about this work remaining to be explored. Uh, if you want to learn more details or to learn those questions or simply talking about touch tactile sensing, please stop by our poster. Thank you.